Welcome to Civil Speedia, the current affairs digital library powered by Shankar IAS Academy. As part of today's discussion, we will look at three topics on terms of prelim. Dard are in tribe and issues and Posha Nabiyan, in other words, National Nutrition Mission and National Finance Reporting Agency. And as part of main so learning topic, we will discuss Iran revolution in short way. First, let us discuss uh, the people or the population of this Dard Aryan tribes, these, uh, this, the people belonging to this Dar Daryan tribe are, do live in the state of Jammu and Kashmir, particularly in the regions of Leh, Ladakh and Kargil. The meaning of the word Dard is those people who live on the hillsides. The, the locations such as Da, Hanu, Bhima, Darchik and Darkon villages in La Leh and uh, Kargil, these locations together called as Aryan Valley and uh, the most of the, their occupation primarily involves goat rearing, sheep rearing for milk and meat and uh, very recently the one of the pressing issue for uh, this particular tribal population is that their population is dwindling or shrinking and uh, if you have a close look their present population is just around 4,000. And uh, very recently, this uh, Indira Gandhi National Center for Arts in New Delhi has organized uh, this Aryan Utsav, or in other words, this Dard Aryan Festival in uh, for, uh, for, uh, for, uh, for, uh, for more than four or five days, particularly wherein we, we could uh, get a charter of demands from around 35 artists who, who came from this uh, Jammu and Kashmir to attend the festival. They have stated various their demands. They have told their region have only three high schools and their, uh, their population have been facing various threats due to modernization, migration and religious conversion and other issues as well. As well. And therefore their traditions and culture are at threat. These are about this uh, Dard Aryan tribes. What we have to keep in mind is ministry. There were certain newspapers which have stated that the Dard Aryan tribes are involved or among the list of scheduled tribes. But the Ministry of Tribal Affairs have clarified on February 7th through Press Information Bureau that the Dard Aryan tribes are not in the list for scheduled tribes. And therefore, as of now, they do not enjoy any constitutional or legal protection for scheduled tribes. And uh, they're, they're also not part of, also part of the list um, in the particular vulnerable tribal groups, which are notified by the Ministry of Home Affairs. As of now, there are 75 tribal, uh, tribal population who come under this particularly vulnerable tribal groups. We will next, next look on the criteria for the determination of particularly vulnerable tribal groups. First, a pre-agriculture level of technology and also on another criteria is the stagnant or declining population and third one is that extremely low literacy and a subsistence level of economy. The This uh, Dar Darian tribes they are practicing endogamy to keep their gene pool intact intact and uh, these are some of the uh, main points related to this are there in tribes and there is a scheme in central government known as development of particularly vulnerable tribal groups and this scheme is implemented by or it's come under ministry of tribal affairs whereas the notification of particularly vulnerable tribal groups come under the parlance of Ministry of Home Affairs. This we have to keep in mind. With this we come to the end of this topic. Next we will discuss about Poshan Abhiyan or in other words National Nutrition Mission. All right, Launched on International Women's Day in the year 2018. The scheme is also called as Prime Minister's Overarching Scheme for Holistic Nourishment. It aims to improve nutritional outcomes of children, adolescent girls, pregnant women and lactating women, mothers. We should know that it is a flagship program of Ministry of Women and Child Development. However, it is implemented by several ministries, national ministries and also various departments coming under 
the state government. Several ministries are involved and the nodal ministry for this whole Poshan Abhiyan or the nutrition, National Nutrition Mission is the Ministry of Women and Child Development. And the vision is to ensure attainment of malnutrition free India by the 75th year of Indian independence that is 2022. Next we will look into the objectives of the Poshan Abhiyan. It focuses on stunting, undernutrition, low birth weight, low birth weight and reducing the prevalence of anemia among young children and also among women and adolescent girls. All right. Stunting in children, here the age of children is 0 to 6 years and also undernutrition for the same age group of children and low birth, low birth weight. It shall be reduced by 6% in 3 years. These 3 years start from 2017, 18, 18, 19 and 19, 20. All right. Every year there shall be a reduction of 2%. And similarly for anemia, for young children, from 6, 6 to 59 months and for women and adolescent girls in the age group totally from 15 to 49 years it shall be reduced by 9% overall in 3 years and per annum there shall be 3% reduction and particularly it focuses on one another information on stunting the, the mission aims to achieve reduction in stunting from 38.4% according to NFHS for survey to 25 percent by the year 2022 even by the given uh, st given uh, uh, speed of reduction or uh, this is difficult to attain however the project aims to achieve 25 percent reduction of stunting to 25 percent by the year 2022 and the monitoring and evaluation in addition to ministry of women and child development will be carried out by niti ayog through its technical support unit and this is about national nutrition mission and mission to improve the nutritional outcomes of uh, women, children, lactating and pregnant women. With this we come to uh, end of this topic. Next we will discuss about national financial reporting authority. All right. It's a statutory body coming under uh, section 132 of the Companies Act of 2013 wherein the act has laid down various qualifications, eligibilities and some of the powers and functions of this national reporting, national financial reporting authority. The need was felt because after the, particularly after the Satyam scam of uh, 2009, a committee on finance uh, submitted its 21st report wherein it has recommended such an authority. All right. And uh, some of the important reasons why it has to be established is that Hitherto or before the creation of this National Financial Reporting Authority, it was Institute of Chartered Accountants of India. The institute was uh, responsible for regulation of auditing or regulation of the profession of chartered accountants in India. However, one, one significant drawback in that institute is that it consists of a council wherein the council consists of 32 elected members and only 8 members nominated by the central government. And in order to monitor this or to regulate this profession of chartered accountants, if you select 32 people by election, then obviously there will be vested interest involved. All right. And therefore, in order to create a, an authority similar to this, which is independent enough to scrutinize the, those, those who carry out this profession and also to keep in, par, keep, in, keep in par with the international best practices for auditing and accounting, such an authority was uh, necessary and also having such an authority will help reducing you know audit frauds or you know uh, accounting frauds and particularly after the Punjab National Bank scam and it, it was more highly relevant and uh, uh, having such mechanisms at the national level will also give improve the foreign direct investments and do more domestic investments to the country and thus spur the economic growth of the nation overall. And uh, some and recently in the month of November 2018, through by way of notification, the government has given a set of rules called as National Financial Reporting Authority Rules 2018, wherein it has given a lot of functions in addition to those given under the under the section 132 of Companies Act 2013. 
some of the functions of this uh, NFRA are to maintain the details of particulars of the auditors in the companies, uh, those companies which come under the uh, which come under the purview of this National Financial Reporting Authority. The companies which come under this authority were given in Rule Three of the of the NFRA Rules 2018. For example, any company that ha which has listed its security on the national stock exchange or any stock exchange in India or abroad and there have been classifications of uh, large unlisted companies based on paid up capital for example in terms of paid up capital it is around uh, if the if the company's paid up capital is 500 crore or more it will come into the purview of this authority and uh, these these terms are it has been discussed in rule 3 of uh, the rules and also to recommend the standards for particularly for auditing and accounting standards for approval by the central government. Once approved by the central government, it has the authority to monitor and enforce compliance of these auditing and accounting standards and also to oversee the quality of service of professional professionals associated with ensuring compliance and suggest measures for improvement of this quality of service related to auditing and accounting and to promote awareness related to the compliance of these standards and to cooperate with national and international bodies for uh, particularly related to auditing and accounting. And this authority is also having the power to investigate, not just as referred by the central government, but also on its own by, by means of SOMOTO. It can investigate SOMOTO or by the cases referred by the central government coming to this nfra the audit of this authority will be carried out by the cag all right comptroller and auditor general of india with this we come to the end of this discussion about national financial reporting authority next we will discuss about this iran revolution all right on 11 february 1979 the Iran revolution, which particularly started in the year 1977, culminated in uh, particularly in February 1979 when they saw our overthrow or resignation of Mohammad Reza Shah Pahlavi, the, the then monarch, till February 1979 in Iran. All right, it was stated that various causes related to the for for the revolution of Iran, particularly the Islamic revolution of Iran, were uh, like. Uh, domestic tyranny, uh, autocratic rule of the monarch and foreign domination. The monarch was said to be pro-Western or pro-European, uh, all right. And these, this uh, stature of the monarch, particularly Reza Shah Pahlavi, who ruled as a monarch in Iran since 1941 till 1979, all right. He was pro-Western. It was not to the willingness of those clergymen and other citizens of Iran. They considered it as loss of sovereignty or an attack on sovereignty on Iran and also he was accused of uh, corruption and there were growing inequality between the rich and the poor and various other reasons abuse of power were, were stated against this uh, monarch of Muhammad Reza Shah Pahlavi and therefore in the year 1977 several sections of society several sections include religious clergymen those people who are who are supporting secular front and even others such as students were participated However, at the end of the revolution, it is the clergymen or the religious leaders who gained superiority over all other groups and subdued them. And finally, they held a referendum in the, in the, among the citizens of Iran and thus established the Islamic State of Iran. All right, this happened in the year 1979. And this religious uprising or this religious opposition Way back started in the year 1963 when the monarch introduced white revolution scheme of the government. But the religious leaders criticized that this is the white revolution scheme announced by the monarch is against the sovereignty of the state of Iran. And it is in a way supporting the imperial powers and thereby they getting Iran subdued under them for their various interests. For example, Iran is a country known for oil resources. All right, which may act against the interest of the public in Iran. And this is about uh, Iran revolution. However, this success of the Iran revolution led to establishment of Islamic State of Iran because in the year, 
in the in the twentieth century, many nations were created based on uh, formed or there were uh, overthrowing of previous governments, etc. Based on philosophies like communist philosophy, like capitalist philosophy, on democracy, etc. But it was Iran who was the first state created on the basis of theocracy, particularly on the ideals of Shia Shiite philosophy. All right, and this actually gave signals to various uh, countries which were then ruled by autocratic in, a, in an autocratic manner of government or in an authoritarian manner of government, so that there is a possibility for a people to revolt and that could lead to overthrowing of a government and they could establish a new constitution on their own and rule themselves all right even the if you if you if you go to the organizers of the tunisian revolution they will say that uh, they got they also got their inspiration way rooted back in the success of iran revolution and it is also one of the reason why several autocratic or authoritarian form of governments still have a strong control over the some of the posts that are democratically elected say for example pakistan the army of pakistan is having a large control over the the democratic posts that are in the in the government democratic services that is because if if it loses control the people may revolt and the nations the the concentration of powers could be diversified and uh, this could lead into a formation of a new government which are not to the likes of the present Pakistan government or for example similar similarly situated authoritarian governments and uh, during the uh, after the Iran revolution particularly during that time around 52 diplomats were held as hostages the till 1979 the United States was pro Iran but after 1977 the United States took its stand totally against the interest of the public of Iran or the then government the government of iran which were formed after 1979 and uh, and even in the year 2015 based on the push given by the united states of america and some of the european states that uh, iran is having uh, enriching lot of uranium for uh, for uh, purposes such as war or creating tensions among the regional powers and therefore, the Iran was forced or in a way forced, coerced to agree to a 2015 joint comprehensive plan of action, a nuclear deal, wherein UN authorities will be allowed for, you know, extensive uh, inspection of the various locations. However, in 2018, United States of America has pulled out of this deal saying and increasing the sanctions over Iran, saying that the Iran is not cooperating or Iran is having... Uh, having it is not allowing the UN authorities to visit as it was pleased by the various authorities and the revolutions this revolution is as well as already told could inspire various thoughts because particularly for example Tunisian revolution all right and uh, coming to the cultural politics if you look into the Iran constitution, the supreme leader is not democratically elected by the people of Iran. The supreme leader of Iran is a religious leader and he was selected by an assembly of experts. All right. And the one who is democratically elected is the president of Iran. All right. And he is the he is only next to the supreme leader in Iran. By article 113 of the Iran constitution, it clearly states that after the supreme leader comes the president of the country the supreme leader enjoys life life term to be the leader it means till the death of the leader he will be the supreme leader of the country so far only two persons have the have been the supreme leader from 1979 to 1989 imam kumaini was the supreme leader and from 19 from 1979 to 1989 and from 1989 till now it was Ali Khamenei he was the supreme leader at present uh, Rouhani was the president of Iran all right and this uh, supreme leader is supported by a guardian council which consists of six clergymen appointed by the leader himself and six jurists these names are recommended by the chief judicial authority to the parliament of Iran. The par name of the parliament of Iran is National Consultative Assembly. And they select and by vote, they are elect by vote these six jurists. And these 
the supreme leader along with this guardian guardian council decides who to stand in an election all right for be it, be it for president be it for members of uh, national consultative assembly and for various other portfolios president actually is uh, it, it has been alleged that the president of iran is just uh, having you know as a, as a acting as a rubber as a stamp uh, and it is overall it is controlled by the supreme leader of iran various portfolios for example he is the commander in chief for the armed forces uh, foreign portfolio domestic policies foreign policies uh, most of the the powers are almost concentrated in the hands of the supreme leader and it was also stated that the present youths who are uh, who are emerging in iran are looking at their fellow global citizens who are enjoying various rights fundamental rights and various uh, rights are uh, instituted under the united universal declaration of human rights enjoyed in various other countries and similar voice could not be expressed in their country say for example freedom of speech and expression the nation is an islamic state and they cannot even utter any any even several uh, words or choices of reforms were restricted by the government and uh, particularly for women there have been several restrictions if you closely look into the political appointment say for example supreme leader or president or uh, those 12 members who are part of guardianship council guardian council and those members of national consultative assembly most of the time the women are not allowed to stand in even stand in an election so far no woman has become a supreme leader or you know the president of iran this is the present day present state of uh, iran and there are also experts who 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 say that there is another political change based on another revolution in iran which will happen and it is certain that it will happen but it ha we could not decide only the time this is also a statement given by various experts and uh, with these things we'll come to the end of our discussion on on, uh, on this iran revolution we request you to like our video comment our video and also to subscribe to our shankar ias academy youtube channel for more updates and content on civil services preparation